You are watching Morning Musings with Reinhard von Hennings, Chairman and Founder of Bridge House Law in Charlotte, North Carolina. Are you ready to meet the future? Hello, this is Reinhard von Hennix. And you may ask me, do you spell meet, M-E-A-T, as in the noun, or M-E-E-T, as in to meet the verb? Well, maybe both. Let's meet the future with 3D printed meat. Welcome to the brave new world. 3D printed meat is where dinner is designed and not reared. As the rapid evolving landscape of food, dinner, food, and technology, how to bring best nutrients to your table is a growing market. In this rapid evolving 3D printing, food printing is the next frontier. The innovation of 3D printed meat is all around the world, and it is not a scene from a futuristic movie. It is real. It is a reality right now. It comes in different forms and shapes because different meats have different forms and shapes. But before we dive a bit deeper, let's take a moment to look into some questions. Where is it happening? How does it taste? And what's the story behind ink as in ink protein and the colors being used? Let's step on our global trip to the Netherlands, the home of Mosa Meat, a company which has been making headlines with their lab-grown burgers. Look into Israel, where Aleph Farms is printing steaks as printing steaks is the most normal things in the world. And don't forget the United States where Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger are now creating meat-like products which are not printed, but just on the shelves for us as plant-based meat alternative. Remember, just a little over a week ago, we are amused about a lab-grown chicken and that it was now allowed to be put into the market. The 3D printing is a new dimension of food and why does it matter? Because 3D printing could well be a game changer for the food industry. It offers sustainable and ethical alternative to traditional meat production. So the million dollar question is now, how does it taste? Well, from what I see and hear, early testers have reported that 3D printed meat tastes surprisingly similar to the real deal. It's a bit like biting into some juicy secret it's a blend of culinary science and art, and it leaves your taste buds in confusion. What is it? Is it delicious? Is it not delicious? Everybody reports it is delicious, but the taste buds have a trouble in really identifying what it is. So let's talk next about the ink, the protein used and the colors being used. The ink in a traditional 3D printed meat is a mixture of plant-based proteins, fats, and other nutrients. They're designed to mimic the texture and the taste of real meat. The origins of those proteins can vary, but they're usually, and I say usually, with a little caveat, we talk later about vegan meat again. So they're usually derived from plants like peas, soy, or wheat, and the colors are very often natural food coloring. So it gives it a bit of a more appetizing appearance from a dinner's palette, from a painter's palette, route straight to your dinner plate. Health-wise, 3D printed meat could be a game changer as well. Imagine your steak is not only delicious, but perfectly tailored to your individual health and nutritional needs. Low in fat, high in protein, just the right amount of vitamins and minerals. It's like having a personal nutritionist in your kitchen, but without the judgmental looks when it comes down to who's eating what. From a legal perspective, 3D printing is a unique challenge. Traditional food laws were not designed with a printing technology in mind. It boils down to the safety of where it's harvested, over how it's produced, how it's stored, how it's sold, how it's eventually, if it's a restaurant, be put onto your table. So the determining liability in an event of a health issue is rather complex. Is it the responsibility of the print manufacturer, the software designer, the ink producer who created this protein ink? Maybe 
the final producer of the ink. While I would personally think that everybody has some kind of liability, but from a health point of view, the final producer may have the biggest say to stop putting something on the table, which is not safe. But how would this person know if the ink is contaminated somehow and only after it's made the problems occur? At this time, there is an ambiguity out in the law and wherever there's an ambiguity, solutions will come, but sometimes too late for the first round of customers. Labeling is a different concern. If a product is created on a lab-based table on a 3D printer and not in a farm, can it be called meat? Or is it a new category altogether? So let's think about what is meat. Can we call it a synthetic protein product? Or do you want to call a tomato a red spherical vegetable entity? Well, this one is technically correct, but nobody likes to eat those spherical entities. Everybody likes to eat a tomato or real meat. In terms of health, 3D printed meat could have benefits. So the labeling needs to identify the benefits or maybe 3D printed meat is specifically tailored to your needs, which then needs another round of labeling. Finally, the question of whether 3D printed meat is vegan is a different ethical dimension. If no animals are harmed in the production, can it be considered cruelty-free? Can it be considered vegan? Or do we just need to have a new vocabulary for this new novel kind of food? For global businesses, these are important issues. The advent of 3D printing means an opportunity for you, an opportunity to create a new market, a new product, a new something. On the other hand, it requires legal and other complex navigation in the world of ethics, marketing, and legal. My question to you, if you could design your perfect 3D printed meat, what would it look like and how would you label it? Whether you're a private citizen, an international business leader, or simply someone eager to stay on top of the latest news, this book is a great way to get caught up on the most recent developments in the worlds of international business, tax, politics, and social affairs. Go to morningmusings.com and order your copy today. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like more information about Bridge House Law, please visit our website at bridgehouse.law. Before you go, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more up-to-date content. Bridge House Law. Business-minded. Client-focused.